In the name of Jesus, good morning. Happy Eve of the name of Jesus. <laughs> We're almost to the eighth day of Christmas, the day that Jesus gets his name, uh, which just happens to coincide with the new year. I don't know if anybody really planned that, but it's kind of amazing to think that we get to start the new year with the name of Jesus. Uh, and that helps us find perspective in lots of things right there. I have a few announcements this morning. <clears throat> I saw the elevator lights were on. <laughs> I think we're still waiting for an inspector to come. So, you going to join the crowd? All right. <laughs> come on down. Well, good morning. Uh, so, this week I'm with the Board of Education. So, back in the narthex on the information table is a sign up. And the Board of Education during the next year would like to start being able to offer more opportunities for families with children. And so we're looking into uh, being able to offer as needed uh, Sunday school. And so if you would like to help in some way, shape, or form, or would just like to have more information on what that might look like, then the sign up, it's, it's not you committing to anything or yet or anything, but just if you want more information, if you're interested in helping in some way, Go ahead and sign up back there, and then that lets us know. I just want to wish everybody a happy new year on behalf of the burners. And for that, there are 12 poinsettias here in the aisles, and four more in the same size, the red ones, that are for you to take home to whoever, if you have a People that are homebound and stuff, I, those are the ones I really would like to see have them, but have at it. <laughs> Thank you, Jean. I'd like to invite everybody to come a week from today, Sunday, to um, help take the decorations down in the church. So after um, Bible class, we're going to provide a lunch, and then we'll come over here to um, take the decorations down. So your help would be appreciated. It actually goes pretty fast. Good morning. Um, as far as the point setters are concerned, anyone who brought some, would you please take them home today? Because they'll be going out as of today. And um, But thank you. It made such a beautiful show this year. Thank you very much. Good morning. Um, this is just a quick reminder that anybody that has board reports, they are due into the church office January 19th for our annual report. And we want to get those in to Lori so she can start working on getting that all typed up and ready to go for us to have in February. So if everybody can work on those reports and get them turned in, that would be great. Thank you. Sounds like everybody's got something to do. Huh? <laughs> a little update on the elevator. Uh, about a week and a half ago, the fire alarm contractor was here, and Advantage Elevator was here, and they went through all of their testing and everything. There was a few glitches, but they got it all worked out, and uh, everything with their test is working per plan. So Advantage Elevator has put in a call to the state l and uh, elevator people to come and inspect and do their test. And then if all of that goes well, then we should be in good shape. But uh, the main issue is we still won't have an elevator till next year. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, next. Thank you. Uh, just in case you were wondering, we are planning on next year. Lots of things to do. Um, a couple of those things to help with Esther, our DCE, she's got assignments to do. And if you participate with that uh, survey and volunteer training, 
that's really going to help her with uh, completing those assignments that she gets from, not from me, <laughs> from the college. So we need to get those done too. So, all right. Um, a few Christmas songs yet today, uh, some New Year's Eve songs. Uh, all with our mind towards uh, joining our Lord uh, in that eternal party in heaven. This one is Once in Royal David's City. His praise will sound. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord. I said I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord. O 
O Almighty God, merciful Father, I, a poor, miserable sinner, confess unto you all my sins and iniquities with which I have ever offended you and justly deserved your temporal and eternal punishment. But I am heartily sorry for them and sincerely repent of them. And I pray you of your boundless mercy and for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me, a poor sinful being. Upon this your confession, I, by virtue of my office as a called and ordained servant of the word, announce the grace of God unto all of you. And in the stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Our help is in the name of the Lord. O oh, sing to the Lord a new song, for he has done marvelous things. The Lord has made known his salvation. He has remembered his steadfast love and faithfulness to the house of Israel. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Glory be to God on high, and on earth peace, good will toward men. We praise Thee, we bless Thee, we worship Thee. We glorify Thee, we give thanks to Thee for Thy great glory. O Lord God, and the King, O the Father Almighty, O Lord, the only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, O Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, that takes away the sin of the world, have mercy upon us. Thou that takes away the sin of the world, receive our prayer. Thou that sittest at the right hand of God the Father, have mercy upon us. For Thou only art holy, Thou only art the Lord, Thou only, O Christ, with the Holy Ghost art most high in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Eternal God, we commit to your mercy and forgiveness the year now ending and commend to you blessing and love the times yet to come. In the new year, abide among us with your Holy Spirit, that we may always trust in the saving name of our Lord Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen.
The Old Testament reading for New Year's Eve is from the 30th chapter of Isaiah. For thus says the Lord God, the Holy One of Israel, In returning and rest you shall be saved, in quietness and in trust shall, your, shall be your strength. But you were unwilling, and you said, No, we will flee upon horses, therefore you shall flee away. And we will ride upon swift steeds, therefore your pursuers shall be swift. A thousand shall flee at the threat of one, and at the threat of five you shall flee, till you are left like a flagstaff on the top of a mountain, like a signal on a hill. This is the word of the Lord. Teach us to number our days. Satisfy us in the morning with your steadfast love that we may rejoice and be glad all our days. The epistle reading is from the eighth chapter of Romans. If God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all, how will he not also with him graciously give us all things? Who shall bring any charge against God's elect? It is God who justifies, who is to condemn. Christ Jesus is the one who died. More than that, who was raised, who is at the right hand of God, who indeed is interceding for us. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger, or sword. As it is written, for your sake we are being killed all day long. We are regarded as sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am sure that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Stand as your, oh, sorry.
I invite you to stand and sing hallelujah for the gospel. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the 12th chapter. Glory be to thee, O Lord. Jesus said, Stay dressed for action and keep your lamps burning. And be like men who are waiting for their master to come home from the wedding feast, so that they may open the door to him at once when he comes and knocks. Blessed are those servants whom the master finds awake when he comes. Truly I say to you, he will dress himself for service and have them recline at table, and he will come and serve them. If he comes in the second watch or in the third and finds them awake, blessed are those servants. But know this that if the master of the house had known at what hour the thief was coming, he would not have left his house to be broken into. You also must be ready, for the Son of Man is coming at an hour you do not expect. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise be to thee, O Christ. Let us confess our faith together using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty, from thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated.
Will you pray with me? May the words of our mouths and the meditation of our hearts be pleasing in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. What do we do on the eve of a new year? How can we face what is ahead? Sometimes we like to have things all figured out and planned and made sense of. But there's also that part of us that enjoys some of the unexpected or perhaps allows the unexpected to remind us that God is love. In that gospel reading today, Jesus was talking about being prepared. At the end of that reading is, For the Son of Man is coming at an hour you do not expect. And as we go and listen to this teaching of that, he says, Not even the Son of Man knows the hour, only the Father. That time is purposely unexpected. Why would God purposefully be unexpected? I think that's part of him holding on to the fact that he wants us to consider who we are today, how we are to be his people here and now, or to live every day, every moment, as if it's the hour the Lord is ready for us. That was what Jesus was saying. Be ready. Keep your lamps burning. Keep your faith alive. If somehow we knew we had three months, two days, and 27 hours left to live, no, we went to do things a little bit differently than if we considered now is the time. Now is the time for us to live as God's people. He keeps that hour unexpected because he is God and what he wants us to expect is his love and his promise and his mercy and his grace. He wants us to expect his name in the water, his body and blood, in the altar, his word to call us to faith. Verse 2 of the hymn spoke out. Before the cross subdued, we bow. It's kind of an interesting phrase there. Why do we have the cross? Why do we keep that before us? Even as I was driving up the hill from Avenue D in the clouds, the first thing you see Above the bell tower is the cross. That cross on top of the bell tower has that circle around it, reminding us that God has done something holy here on the cross. He came for us. He died bearing our sin. All those uncertainties that we worry about, that we let fear come and shake us, he took those on in his own body on the tree. And even though he told his disciples on the third day he would rise again, they weren't quite expecting it. That's his great act. The more than this in that reading was that he rose from the dead. Death no longer has any power over us. Why do we want to know the hour of our death? It no longer has any power over us. We are children of God. You may have noticed that I picked a verse for our text today that was not in the readings. Luke chapter 23, verse 43 
This comes from Christ on the cross. I'm going to back up. One of the criminals who were hanged railed at him, saying, Are you not the Christ? Save yourself and us. How often have we been tempted? God, if you're God, why don't you do it my way? But the other rebuked him, saying, Do you not fear God, since you are under the same sentence of condemnation? And we indeed justly, for we are receiving the due reward for our deeds. But this man has done nothing wrong. And he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And Jesus said to him, Truly, I say to you, today you will be with me in paradise. What an unexpected hour. A criminal. One deemed by the Romans as worthless, dragged out to be hung on the cross. One on his right, one on his left. The one cried out, well, Jesus, if you're special, why don't you do something for me? The other cried out, Lord, I want to be with you. And then those beautiful words of promise from Jesus today. And even though he was suffering and even though he knew he deserved to suffer those words changed everything for him. He, on his cross, was with Jesus. And today would be the day that he would be in paradise. I don't know if that made the pain any less or the tragedy of what was going on less scary, but I'm pretty sure his faith was ignited there with that promise of Christ in those last few hours where he was dying on the cross were the best hours of his life. He was with Jesus. He was going to heaven. It was going to be paradise. For the cross subdued, we bow. God certainly had the power to come down all glorious and just accomplish those things that we think he ought to have done. But he chose the way of the cross because there at the cross he showed us how much he's willing to suffer for us, how much he loves us how much he truly knows what we deserve. And yet, he came to be with us. There on that cross, that unexpected word today changed everything for him. There on his cross, today is changed for us. And yes, it does us good to look back on the past year to remember his mercy and grace. Maybe those that we have lost from this side of life, but who are with the Lord. That's that verse 4. Now we remember as we pray our dear ones in your caring. They're with Christ. Who brightly shine in endless day, past death and all despairing. At our life's end, Lord, as your own, bring us with them around your throne. Let us come to that paradise, the joys 
of heaven sharing. We hear that word, we hear that promise, and it changes everything. Yes, there is still cancer. Yes, there is still trials. There might even be a political election next year. We have a God who loves us. And we can live in the midst of that suffering with a faith that is alive, that is joyful, that today is a day the Lord has made, and we can rejoice and be glad in it. Today is a day that he has given us his promise that he has opened paradise for us. Today is a day that we can live and tell others about Jesus. The Bible tells us that on the eighth day after Christ was born, he was circumcised and given the name Jesus. And the name Jesus is uh, if you say it translated from Hebrew, it's God is our Savior. Jesus is God our Savior. And even though he shed his blood as he received that name, he did that to save us. Because yes, our sins are wearisome. This world is lost in darkness. But we have the light. We have that promise. The day. Now is the day of salvation. Now is the day to hear his voice and to rejoice that we are loved, that we are forgiven that we have a future and a hope. In the name of Jesus, amen. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from thy presence, and take not thy Holy Spirit from me. Restore unto me the joys of thy salvation and uphold me with thy free spirit. Amen.
Lord God, eternal Father and giver of every good gift, we commit to your mercy the year now ending. Forgive us our sins where we have done wrong. Work in our hearts true repentance and faith and redeem us from all the evil of this past year. Lord, in your mercy. Lord God, you have shown us hard times and exposed many idols among us. Yet if we are faithless, Christ remains faithful and will not deny himself. Help our unbelief that we may know nothing can separate us from your love in Christ Jesus. Lord, in your mercy. Lord God, you have preserved this congregation in the faith for another year. We give you thanks for the blessings and guidance. Grant that by your grace we may continue to serve you in this place. Lord, in your mercy. Lord God, preserve our preaching and teaching so that it is faithful to your word. Ensure that your holy sacraments are administered according to your command and promise and help us to reach out in love to our community. Lord, in your mercy. Lord God, we commend to your blessing and love the times yet to come until you bring this life on earth to an end. Guard and guide us by your strong arm Lead us according to your word and renew us in clean hearts and trust you and show love toward our neighbor. Lord, in your mercy. Lord God, hear our prayers for our nation and its government. Preserve our republic, we implore you. Give health and competence to those who serve in positions of authority. Protect those who serve in the line of danger for our safety and give peace in our time. Lord, in your mercy. Lord God, we give thanks to you for the many mercies and gifts you showered upon us this past year. You have given life, healed and comforted. You have provided for our spiritual and physical well-being. You take care of us every day. All this you have done not because of any merit in us, but only out of love for us in Jesus, our Savior. Comfort and sustain your children who suffer from sickness, need, affliction, or grief including Kathy Gable, Dolores Hyden. Lord, in your mercy. Lord God, strengthen all who commune at this altar, that the body and blood of Christ would keep them in the one true faith to life everlasting. Lord, in your mercy. Lord God, you neither slumber nor sleep as you keep watch over us. While our eyes ever grow heavy with sleep, have compassion on our weak flesh and pour out your spirit upon us, that in faith we would stay dressed for action with our lamps burning until our master comes. Lord, in your mercy. Lord God, Heavenly Father, abide among us in this new year with your Holy Spirit, that we may always trust in the saving name of our Lord Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks unto the Lord our God. It is truly meet, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. For in the mystery of the word made flesh, you have given us a new revelation of your glory that seeing you in the person of your Son, we may know and love those things which are not seen. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord God of Sabaoth, heaven and earth are full of thy glory. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he, 
blessed is he, blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you, this do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
now let us thou thy servant depart in peace according to thy word. For mine eyes have seen thy salvation, which thou hast prepared before the face of all people. A light to light in the Gentiles, and the glory of thy people Israel. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, word without end. Amen. O oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, and his mercy endureth forever. Let us pray. We give thanks to you, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through this salutary gift, and we implore you that of your mercy you would strengthen us through the same in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Bless we the Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his camps upon you and give you peace.